Hi there everybody and welcome to the first tutorial in the series No Limits of Control. Today I'm going to show you how to catch and hold a fourth finger flash break, also known as a pinky break or simply a break. This is a fundamental technique in card magic to mark a certain position in the deck in order to shift or cut the deck to that very position and thereby controlling a single card or a stock to the bottom or the top of the deck. Let's take a close look at this right now. First of all, let's picture what we are aiming at. Hold the deck in the standard operational grip I fancy calling the magician's grip. Now, create a gap at the inner right corner of the deck and have the flash of your pinky getting jammed between the packages. Et voila! You are now holding a perfect so-called fourth finger flash break or simply a break. Nothing to be seen at the front side of the deck and you are holding the deck a hundred percent under control. Under normal working conditions performing close-up card magic, you don't have to hold a break like that. It's absolutely fair to hold a larger gap, which you will find indicated at the front side of the deck a little bit, however. But layman will not be able to read this sign and during the time you are holding the break during a performance, they shouldn't be concerned with the deck anyways. Also, you can cover this edge at the front with your index finger. So something like that will usually do the job just fine. Here is how you practice catching a break. Swing cut a package, bring the other package on top and catch the break under cover of squaring the cards. One more time. Swing cut a package, bring the other package on top and catch a break under cover of squaring the cards. As soon as you are comfortable with catching and holding a fair break, practice to transfer the deck from left hand magician's grip to right hand overhand grip while holding the break. This is very important. You have to be able to do this without any effort, being able to focus your attention to everything else in the room while having the deck switching hands completely spontaneously. Mastering this, you will make a gigantic step in becoming a real card magician. However, we are not done here yet, because many card control techniques are based on catching a break with a so-called in-jog, and that is a card that is sticking out of the deck a little bit towards the direction of the performer. So, one card sticking out of the deck pointing to you. If you now approach the deck with your right hand as if to grab an overhand grip, Simply push the in jog slightly down with your thumb and push the card square with the rest of the deck. Automatically this motion creates a nice break. Pretend to square the deck and you are done. Pushing the in jog downwards, the gap will open over the in jog. So that shifting the packages now will bring the former in jog to the top of the deck. Of course, you can create a break underneath the in jog. Repeat the same motion, but instead of pushing the in jog down, this time you're going to slightly pull it upwards with your thumb creating a break. Shifting the packages now, the in jog will go to the bottom of the deck and the card underneath the in jog moves to the top. Again, the swing cut comes in handy for practice. Swing cut the deck and then in jog the top card of the left hand package by applying pressure upon it with the tip of the right hand thumb while bringing the other package on top. Create an up or down break under cover of squaring up the cards, just like explained. Shift the packages and go for another round. Practicing this, you are doing some very important preparatory work for miracles to be performed with your hands. Using in jogs is one of the oldest written heritage in card magic. It was first mentioned in Scott's Discovery of Witchcraft, published in 1584, we read in the Royal Road to Card Magic. And also Erdnays gives this quite some attention in the expert at the card table. So you really got to get this at your fingertips if you are serious about your card magic. 
In the next episode of this series, I'm gonna show you three extremely practical ways how to use this technique within the process of having a spectator return a card to a random position in the deck. So this tiny element we talked about today is going to be embedded into a larger motion. But yet again, the larger motion will not stand alone, but taking part in a general interaction with the audience. And these two aspects of performing magic, the sneaky little things you're doing with your hands and the interaction with the audience, correlate with each other. The better you are with your hands, the more you can focus on your audience. The more you interact with your audience, the less heat there's going to be on your hands. And before you know it, you turn from someone who's just doing tricks into a real wizard. You're going to be Gandalf doing fireworks for the hobbits. Yeah, no, I don't know. Was it Ben Stiller? You don't know? Yeah, I don't know. Do you know? I don't care. Look, um, we are done here. Thank you for watching. Give it a like and share with friends and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, not to miss what's coming up next on this channel. My name is Marius, and thank you for watching. Be sure, more magical stuff is going to be uploaded very soon.